G'day, welcome to the New Sphere Podcast. I am your host, Isaac or Shrek. And today we are interviewing a spearfishing character from New Zealand. Just like every other week, this is the show where we interview spearfishing experts, authorities and characters from around the world every week. And uh, ooh, you're in for a treat today. We've got a hilarious female spearer from New Zealand named Catherine. But before I introduce her a little bit, I wanted to do something a little different and read you something that I wrote this week. I felt like it, it hit a core with, it, with the new Spiro community this week. I felt like I got up on my high horse, but here it is anyway. Uh, as a YouTube con- comment on someone else's video, but Kenna Danker says, Can I ask why people, in brackets, seems to be mostly foreigners too, take up spearfishing solely for sport? It just looks unnecessary and excessive since it's not for survival and seems to contribute to already overfished oceans. But maybe I'm wrong. Would love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, no one answered Kenna Danker's thoughts, so I thought I'd get up on my high horse and respond. So this is what I said. Spearfishing is a bit like gardening or farming in the way that it reconnects people to their natural environment. When you take the effort to grow something in the garden by planting a seed, watering it, weeding the garden, feeding the soil, harvesting the food, preparing the food and then feeding your family, it gives you a deep sense of understanding and connection to the natural environment. Spearfishing is similar due to the fact that in order to spearfish successfully, you must learn about your body and how it works and train it to freedive. Then you must enter the marine environment and begin to stay and understand how fish feed, shelter, move and interact with the world around them and deal with predators like man. The hunt then begins which has an appeal all of its own and appears differently to the uninitiated. Selecting an individual target species, positioning yourself in order to have a shot opportunity and then shooting and landing the fish are all skills that take time and energy to develop. Then when you have the fish on your spear you must kill the fish, care for the fish, bleed and ice the fish, fill it or prepare the fish for eating, wash all the equipment and then finally cook the fish. This is a huge time investment that exists in contrast to the supermarket consumer, instant food on the table process that most of us exist in in our modern day lives. With work, time, knowledge and understanding comes greater connection with the natural environment and therefore a far more sustainable and ethical mindset towards food. And then I went on to say, nature does not exist in a vacuum and humans can be a healthy part of the ecosystem. Overfishing exists due to disconnection between people and the natural environment and not the opposite. And uh, thus endeth my comments. But uh, I felt like I struck a chord this week. Love to hear your comments. The New Spiro comedy, uh, community on Facebook. Come along and join. It'll be linked up in today's show notes. If you go to noobspiro.com forward slash Katrin, I'll have that image up there and you can uh, lay waste to uh, the comments on there. That'll be fantastic. But Katrin, she's a Kiwi airline attendant come insta-famous Spiro star. She does it with an extremely sharp sense of humor. Um, at C-A-T-T-R-I-N underscore for uh, Instagram reference. She makes me laugh on the regular and uh, I enjoy following along her channel, so it's excellent. Um, she's New Zealand's most disqualified female Spiro. We talk about how you can avoid getting into uh, the DQ situations because if you spend you know, the time and money to go to a comp, you want to avoid DQ. So, uh, yeah, we also talk about thought and what the hell it means. Uh, and also we, we delve into politics, which is unusual apart from um, – a certain advert on the show that has since been pulled. Um, Katrin, she she has these prof- profound uh, political beliefs. She sums them up with uh, this quote, don't sweat the petty stuff and don't pet the sweaty stuff. So that's about as political as we ever get on this show. So I'm really looking forward to um, uh, introing her in just a sec. Before then, we've got two podcast reviews, some up- upcoming comp information, Patreon-funded New Zealand trip update and a new sponsor. So... Here we go. Shout outs. Uh, reviews. Shrek and Turbo's podcast has not only cut the learning curve from noob to beginner, but also reignited the motivation to get back into spearfishing. Being a landlocked Spiro, the noob Spiro helps keep me motivated and reduces the learning curve by providing in-depth. And then the rest of the review got that got cut off. But th- thanks for that, Stoffy21. And, ooh, Rotter, Rotter for Rex says, sweet as. I love that. My favorite podcast, but you need to bring back the fake pro-Trump American accent spearing magazine ad. I bought 101.99 tips and longer and deeper thanks to y'all. God bless new Spiro. Oh, yeah. Um, so thanks for that, Rodifer Rodif- Rex. So, uh, I do love striking a note with uh, the American listeners. I think my, my accent's pretty, pretty friggin' good. We'll say friggin'. 
Um, two comps. Let's get into that. Here we go. North Florida shootout, April 29 to May 3rd. Check that out. These guys uh, organize a hell of a tournament. Check it out. So it's called North Florida Shootout. Just ch- p- pump that into Google, Google and you'll get a, a ton of information in there. It's uh, the captain's meeting April 29th, Ancient City Brewing, 3420 Agricultural Center, St. Augustine, Florida. So check that out. And one more, the 2020 USA Freshwater Nationals in August the 3rd. Check it out, Beaver, Beaver Lake, Arkansas. It's going to be awesome. So if you want to find out more about the Freshwater Worlds, go to freshwaterworlds.com. NZ trip. I'm packing my gear today for the NZ Kingfish trip. Now, this is a trip of a lifetime. If uh, you know, if you don't know much about the Yellowtail Kingfish, the world records have been taken in New Zealand, the Three Kings Islands, that's where I'm headed. I'm absolutely sport. Uh, Three Kings Islands chasing big yellowtail with Nat Davey, former guest on the show, NSP episode 53. And his lovely partner, Rose Shellpotter, who also holds several world records of her own. So hopefully we'll get an interview in. And uh, big thanks to the patrons. Patreon.com forward slash Noob Spiro. There's 26 there who support the show on an episode basis, on an episode by basis basis. Really want to thank you guys. You have funded this trip. Also, before we get in, I know this is a huge long intro. Thank you for your patience. Kill Shot Spear Guns. Ed Martin, a patron listener, maker of fine timber spear guns, has offered a special on spear guns and freediving courses for Noob Spear listeners. Killshot Spear Guns is based in the Florida Keys and has been making they, they've been making simple, dependable, and deadly accurate craft handcrafted spear guns for years. Ed's also got an interview that's coming up, and uh, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, the, there's a special. Use the code Noob. N-O-O-B to save $30, US dollars on any spear gun. And you can also use the same code to save some money on free diving courses there too. So kill, killshotspearguns.com, based there in the Florida Keys. Thanks, Ed Martin. Let's hook in to today's interview with Catherine Sace. Yo. This episode of the Noob Spear Podcast is brought to you by spearfishing.com.au. They've been on board for more than 100 episodes. And I'd love for you to shop at spearfishing.com.au. They have a price beat guarantee, hassle-free returns, flat shipping rates across Australia, and you can save 20 bucks. For every purchase over $200, if you use the code Noob Spiro, you save $20. Thanks for supporting the Noob Spiro Podcast and shopping with spearfishing.com.au. This episode of the Noob Spirit Podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at noobspirit.com forward slash Audible. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Who uses those? Anyway, noobspirit.com forward slash Audible. Can you can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you got a headset on? Uh, or are yeah, you... yeah, I've got the. I'm rocking the earphones. Oh, choice. All right. Cables because I'm I'm not rich. Cool. That will do for a fantastic introduction. I hope my editor does not edit that out at all. Welcome to the show, Catherine. <laughs> G'day, mate. Good. <laughs> Be here. Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> Hi, my name is a... Catherine Sace, and I use headphones, not <laughs> earphones. <laughs> well, I don't have them either. Like I was at the gym the other day with this cord hanging down, and like I just Humble felt like, leaks. yeah, I just felt like people were just looking at me like, hmm. Not only are you out of shape, but you haven't even got up with it head headphones. So I was like, yeah, it's just me. It's our Shrek rolls. Yeah, now people usually look at me in the gym as well because I'm sitting on the uh, stair machine. I'm just drinking a six pack of beer, uh, <laughs> not actually doing any work. So at least you're consistent from your Instagram to real life. So that's that's something. It's mm. sure it's sure a thing, isn't it? It's a thing. It's definitely the thing. So your Instagram profile says sarcastic punishing catfish New Zealander. So all those things are true. Yeah, I'm actually about to. I'm actually about to update that um i think i'm going to have something about like one day this is going to be a mum blog and half of you are going to have to leave or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> because one oh, day I'm going to this fat old lady saggy titties no one's going to want to see what i'm putting mm. up now mm-hmm. so i'm this is kind of my last hurrah last gasp oh well well look you, you made it to the new sparrow while you were still pre uh, fat mum stage so th- i'm just happy we got you <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was really stoked to get you on the show. You're New Zealand's most disqualified female Spiro, as well as some of your other talents I've already mentioned. Um, but you also hold a couple of records as well. Is that right? 
Yeah, look, I've, I've gotten lucky a couple of times uh, with some records. I was lucky enough to head out to the Chatham Islands uh, once upon a time and managed to shoot a harpooka, which, you know, you usually only see them on the mainland uh, at, well, let's say about 100 metres plus. Mm-hmm. That's me That's me guessing. I don't actually line fish, so that could mm-hmm. be completely fabricated. Um, there's been a couple of a couple of legends that have shot them off the mainland. Um, I think the, the, the first dude of New Zealand shot one in Milford Sound, and okay. a friend of mine, Cameron Pepperell, shot one, a pup off Wellington Harbour. Oh, wow. My, my little one came in at 7.88 kegs, which I was really happy about. I think the men's yeah. record was something about 40 kilos or something, which is substantially better. Yeah. But like you say, they're getting rarer and rarer to see as well. So I think I chatted with Pat Swanson. He had, he had shot one as well, but I think it was maybe just over the 10 kilo mark somewhere. So I think any harp hooker is a good harp hooker, isn't it? Any harp hooker is a good harp hooker. Yeah, it was crazy that day. We actually um, we went out on the rib and we saw them schooling from the surface. I could hardly believe my eyes. It was amazing. It was so mm. cool. We're going to hook into getting disqualified, well, hopefully how not to get disqualified in comps and and how to have your records um, registered instead of disqualified as well. That will be amazing, I'm sure. So I'm looking forward to that and the veterans' fault. But let's let's talk about your origins. How did you get started in the water? What was the what was the moment that it all began? Oh, I think I was in um, I was in my early twenties, and I've always been kind of scared of the scared of the water a little bit. Uh, growing up out in Fotopu, West Auckland, swimming up there was fine. Um, but it wasn't really snorkeling sort of territory. So I was always always a little bit afraid. I got to Norfolk Island on a work trip and I thought, you know what, stuff this, I'm gonna grab my fare by the balls and um, see what I can do here. So I remember asking one of the blokes on the on the plane, um, if he knew anyone that spearfished in Norfolk Island, and he goes, "Yeah, yep, I can organise to get you taken out." Uh, so that afternoon, I went out for just like a little, a little snorkel, and that was kind of the first snorkeling I think I'd ever done as a, I think I was twenty three at that stage, and mm. it um, it petrified me. It absolutely blew my mind, and I saw a turtle, and I remember the the guy that took me. I grabbed his hand so tight, I was pretty scared of the ocean, mm-hmm. just that inky blue unknown, and. Uh, I just, like, I was like, yep, yep, cool. I want to try this again. And he, and he goes, yeah, do you want to come spearfishing tomorrow? And I was like, yep, I want to do this. So, um, yeah, went into the water and it's a bit of a shit story, actually. <laughs> no, nah, that's nah, all good. So, like, it, it sounds weird, though, because it's like you're kind of terrified, but then you're pushing through it. So something must have intrigued you. I mean... What 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 kind of what kind of grabbed you? So obviously seeing a turtle was pretty cool. Yeah, seeing a turtle was awesome. I mean, it's it's more the fear of the the fear of the unknown. Um, or the it, it just, I think I got to a certain age. I think the answer to your question is age got me, and I was yeah. like, you know what, I'm sick of being scared of things. I'm just going to start doing things. Um, yeah. So the next the next day was pretty funny. Went out on the boat, and uh, I think there was some. Trevally or something schooling around, and I was handed a. I remember it was like a one thirty boche. It was a massive gun, and there was a school of these drama type things going around. So there I was in my little uh, little spring suit with surf fins and a knife strapped to my, strapped to my calf, and I was like, "Cool, my, that's my leg, not my baby cow." That was at home. Um, <laughs> I took it, took a wee dive down, and I aimed for this sweep or drummer, or whatever. The, oh no, it was a little drummer, and pulled the trigger. But I had the gun kind of a little bit too close to me. I was holding a bit like a rifle. Oh, no. And I wasn't prepared for the recoil. So the first yeah. time I ever pulled trigger on a spear gun, I just clocked myself so mm. hard. In the, in the head? Oh, right, yeah. Right yeah. in the eye. Right in the eye. So on the, um, the eye socket. So I, I burst up to the surface and I was just like, am I bleeding? Am I bleeding? And the guys are like, uh, <laughs> no, no. What did you do? And I'm like, the recoil, the recoil, it got me. So oh, then the boys reloaded man. my gun, went back down, Shot the little drummer, and I was just absolutely proud as punch. I was like, I've I spared my first fish, yeah, I, and I just thought it was really cool. But, but the reason I got into it is actually I saw one of my friends, uh, Cameron, one of my best friends from high school. He was living up in Ruakaka at the time, and I just see like, oh, this guy's going in the water with a spear gun and shoot. shooting. This is badass. Like, I really want to try it, but I'm scared of the ocean. So how is this going to happen? So that's when I that's when I got to Norfolk Island. And I was like, you know what? Put me in the water. Let's mm. see how I go. Yeah, nice. And so you just you just got sick of the fear, decided 
fuck it, I'm going to have a crack. And then you, you, you got in and got amongst it. And um, sounds like you were fortunate to have a couple of people around you that helped you out. Has that, was, that, was that consistent throughout your sort of your learning years? Or, you, you know, your early years, Lenny? Yeah, absolutely. I've been lucky to dive with some really amazing people and um, really supportive, amazing partners over the years as well. Um, yeah, just heaps, heaps of awesome dive buddies that have taught me a lot. And I feel like you can grow so much with diving through, with diving with um, different people. So, yeah, I've been mm. really lucky, really, really mm. lucky. You've dived internationally a, a little bit as well. Like, uh, I mean, Norfolk Islands, so Australia and New Zealand. Um, where, where else have you been? Yeah, I spent uh, a week in Nui, which is where I shot my first wahoo. Uh, that was pretty cool. And then I got addicted, to, uh, completely addicted to Rarotonga. So I try and go chasing wahoo uh, every year there now in August. Okay. Uh, but th- that's my sort of, that's my main kind of place. And I did a little bit of diving in California as well. And that was that was pretty cool. Went out with, do you know that guy Forrest Galante? Yeah, yeah. The uh, you're Naked or Afraid guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Extinct, extinct or Alive, I should say. Yeah. Got to get him on. Mm. Oh, you should get him on. Mm-hmm. He's always on Joe Rogan. I always listen to him, and uh, he's he he sounds like a mad dude. But um, he is. He's a yeah. good dude, man. Mm-hmm. Another one. There's a few on Joe Rogan. I really want to get a hold of Steve Rinell is another one from Meat Eater. But um, it's just getting a hold of these guys. I guess they uh, they they're pretty sort of famous in their own right. So I guess you know the more people that follow them, the harder they are to get in touch with. So how, who put you in touch with um, Forrest? Uh, my partner at the time, actually, uh, yeah, they, oh, it was, um, oh, or was it, was it Chris? It might've been even Chris Coates. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my ex, uh, was sort of in, in that scene. So he, um, he could have, he kind of had some, some pretty good contacts at the time. So yeah, sir. in touch with, with Forrest, we met him in Auckland and then he's like, you know what, why don't you guys come over? And we're like, well, don't invite us unless you want us to actually show up. He's like, no, no, come over. And we're like, okay, here we go. <laughs> so did you head out to the, what's the famous island off there uh, where they get the white sea bass? We didn't go to Catalina Island. Mm. Is that mm. the one you're thinking of? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, but the the partner at the time managed to shoot a white sea bass. I saw a couple, but I was still very, very new to spearing back there and back then. And if, and if I went now, I think I'd, um, that trip would really benefit me. But I do have a story for you a little bit later <laughs> <laughs> about what happened on that trip. If, if you do want, I've got a, I've got a bit of a story for the, a, a bit of a, ch- a, a bit of a cheeky poo story, probably I'd imagine. Oh, well, uh, you know, I do like, I do love a good agua mud, but uh, <laughs> <it's been> a- <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been, I've been caught with a camera and I've been hanging off a ba- boat and it was like, it was one of those messy ones, like it went everywhere. And this bastard took the photo and then um, <laughs> and uh, this guy knows me fairly well and then he did up this massive artwork with it and he and he had aqua turd on it in green, like the Shrek lettering and that. Oh, like, you, no. You, you, you prick, you can't, you can't put that out there. And I don't think he ever did, so I got away with it. But um, shit, that was a narrow, that was a near miss. <laughs> I'd um I'd love some artwork for my for my flat. So if there is one of those floating around, excuse the pun. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great pun. That was a fantastic pun. <laughs> yeah, but I mean I don't know. I think I think like you can't you simply can't dive if you've got a poo. And like sorry guys, but public service announcement: girls mm. poo too. Everyone poos. No. You know, you might be led to believe we don't. We do. No, you're not supposed to. I know you're not supposed to, but I, I no, guess... girls you're... aren't supposed to. Boys, it's okay That's with boys, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it's 2020, but girls can poop. It is one of those funny things. Um, so the water temp is something that I heard like a lot about with the California. That's why they get the kelp forest there. So they've got like real warm temps on land, but then the ocean is, you know, like really cold most of the time. Is that Was that your experience there? Yeah, the thermoclines were awesome. So uh, not only did we target white sea bass, uh, but we also went north. I think you've had him on your podcast, actually, Matt Madison. He took us yeah, out yeah. for um, abalone as well. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, Matt, he's, he's a good man. He's um, good man, eh? He's angry about the ab, ab situation. They got they got smoked by the purple urchins over there. So um, I think still had, that, that fishery is going to be closed for a while, I'd imagine. But um, it's a real shame. But uh, what do you do? Because, I mean, you've got to let, uh, let them recover. I guess um, hopefully they recover enough that, you know, scientists are finding them everywhere and then or biolo- marine biologists are finding them everywhere and then they might look at opening it up again. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. 
I know, but I mean, that fishery is the prime example of the great success of when fisheries are managed properly. Those mm. power are plentiful and huge. They are. They had, yeah, they are massive. Yeah, do you agree with shutting it down? Or, I mean, like, did you see a lot while you were there, or did it, was it just because he took you to all his honey holes? He might have taken us to his honey holes, actually. So, um, yeah, so sometimes I mean, I did a, a, a couple of dives. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it might not be an adequate representation of kind of what they're seeing up and down the coastline, but. You know, like if you're a if you're an avid abalone chaser, then you're not going to take fisheries department to where you know all your abs are. <laughs> you're right. You know? You're right. Exactly. So I I don't really think I've got a fair enough understanding to to really comment on um yeah. on Matt Madison's honey holes. <laughs> it's good to get a Kiwi perspective on it though, like because you, <laughs> because I mean you know like you've you've got that local experience and you've gone over there, so you can compare it with New Zealand's power. Or you know, local abalone um, in, um, sort of yeah industry, I guess. Like, it, but they they've been hammered in New Zealand too. So um, the bag limits seem to be changing as well. Yeah, they are. And you know, the worst thing about power is that the you know the blood doesn't coagulate, obviously. So um, I think it's yeah, we've got to educate people that you can't just rip them off the rocks with your knife. You've got to use a plastic tool, actually a sharpened sort of like a ground down MPI plastic spatula tool, like a power, actually, an actual MPI power remover. Um, they are the best to use. But um, if you're going to cut one off the rock, it's going to die anyway. So Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I don't really – I don't eat them much. So, I, I mean, I don't really froth on them, so I, I don't grab them a lot. But um, – yeah, I know a lot of people do, eh, or they get curious and rip one up and you're like, nah, see, look, it's bleeding now. It's going to die. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, rugged, rugged. Um, there's a few things taking shape on the New Zealand spearfishing scene. I see, like, the crayfish limits changed in some of the zones as well last year, um, and I guess that's a good thing in terms of trying to help their numbers recover and stuff. What's your take on it? I mean, anything that's going to make... I mean, anything that's going to make the ocean more plentiful in years to come, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pro for. Mm. Our limits are pretty massive. I mean, if I went out and took my limit, that's more than I could eat in two weeks, probably. So yeah, yeah. It's you, I understand people get frustrated because they have they want to go and get crayfish for for Christmas or for a birthday or for an event or whatever, but mm. it's got to be managed. It's got to be manageable. Yeah, nah, cool. Hey, we got all political and deep there. Um, oh, yeah, no, I don't really do politics, <laughs> eh, so. <laughs> Can we go back to shit actually, banter, please? Actually, I read your political views on Facebook. Um, it says, don't sweat the petty stuff and don't pet the sweaty stuff. Is that, does that pretty much sum it up? It's, what is it? Don't. Don't sweat the petty stuff. Pet the don't sweaty sweat. stuff. And don't don't pet the sweaty stuff. No, no, you... no. I'm I'm pro petting the sweaty stuff. That's what I thought. I was like, oh, she can't mean this. Like, oh no, I do. Maybe... I mean it wholeheartedly. No, no. You say you say don't pet the sweaty stuff in the quote. I was like, oh, okay. Some, yeah. Maybe you you were trying to impress family or something, probably. Hey, look. Yeah, maybe I was going through a bit of a phase there where I was I'd cha- trying to change, trying to be a bit better, um, better person. Yeah, yeah I was work, like a... obviously. 2018 resolution that failed, but they yeah, were, I think it's so. been there since about 2015, or even or even <laughs> earlier than that. Um, I'm gonna, I'm going to go and change that. I'm going to go and change that yeah. just for you. Pet the sweaty stuff, 100. percent I'm w- I'm with you. I'm going to say petting sweaty stuff is is all it's going to say. My whole profile is just going to say petting sweaty <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, it would good. It would. It would work good. Like uh, you know, you'd have to change your profile photo to match, but um, that that could definitely be a, an intriguing sort of statement to make, I think. And it would make Facebook a better place. Oh, look, it would. I mean, I don't spend a lot of time on on the old uh, the old Facebook. I'm more of an Insta gal myself. But um, mm-hmm. but you know, I could I could change all that. I could change. I could spruce it up a bit for you. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool. Looking forward to it. Hey. Um, like, what's a challenging species, like something memorable that you've taken down that you're really quite proud of? It doesn't even have to be like a stellar example of the species, but, um, you know, what's a stork that you're super proud of? Oh, man, my um, my best fish I've ever got was a, was a waihu that I landed in Rarotonga. Um, so I've got a good friend over there. His name's Johnny Beasley. Um, and for some reason, he doesn't mind diving with me, which I quite like. Um, and he's into films and film and photos so he's like oh yeah we'll get you a big wahoo we'll get you a big wahoo and we'll film it it's going to be grand it's going to be exceptional and i swear he's got the 
biggest blooper reel of me just shooting water <laughs> time after time after time. <laughs> So, he's got probably he's probably got sixty minutes or so of just oh. like spears flinging into the into the blue abyss. It's shocking, yeah. but um, yeah, one one time I think it was the year before last actually, uh, we we struck it so good on the fads. Yeah, we um, yeah, we had some big schools of wahoo coming in, and of course we did the uh, the old Chris Coates um goon sack flasher, oh, and so they're nice. quite curious about that. I mean, that's the that's just that's my number one. Number one tip for anyone doing blue water fishing, blue water spearing, is just like get one, like get a goon sack, chop chop it up, make it into one of those flashes, and Bob's your uncle. Here come the fish. Uh, yeah, no, this um, this particular day, I managed to shoot a 27, 28, and 30 keg wahoo, and wow. I was just absolutely beside myself, absolutely stoked. Yeah, so probably that 30 kilo wahoo, yeah, has got to be my. I would say the best fish I've ever shot. So, like, okay, take us through the failures. What was going wrong? Were you shooting from too far away? Were you shooting high, shooting low? Were you not far enough underwater? What was the story there? Can I just say yes to everything above? <laughs> hey, I, haven't, I haven't shot one myself, so I'm just sort of hazarding some guesses here. I've never, ever shot a Wahoo, and I really want to. So, Have you seen one on the water? No. Nah. No, nah, haven't even seen one. I, I, I do know where they go, but... Generally, my crew don't head out that way, so I, like my chances of getting out there has just been few and far between. So I haven't had the opportunity. But I, when I when I get the opportunity, I would prefer not to shoot just off into the blue water to fill another blooper reel of noob spiro fails. So ha, ha, exactly, ha, how did you how did you figure it out? What what did you change? So, so you got to get close, right? Mm. And then you get closer. Okay. But then you also get closer after that, right? And then after okay. that, you just get a little bit closer again. So you're looking uh, for, and you're not supposed to eyeball wahoo. That's the hard thing because I get so excited because I, I don't as much as I'd like to. So any kind of fish I see, I just want to eyeball the fuck out of. And I'm just like, hey, <laughs> I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. I'm looking at you. Looking at me. I'm just like, come over here. And it's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, you're staring at me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm staring at you because I want to shoot you in the head. Come here. Come over here. So um, uh, yeah, you've got to you've got to look for the detail on the eyeball. That's kind of when you know that you they the wahoo is close enough or well, that's what I, that's what i've uh, that's what's worked for me in the past um so you're saying like don't look at them in the eyes but look at the detail in the eyeballs is that that's like, exactly what i'm saying 100 contradiction there <laughs> yeah, 100%. just want to point that out um yeah i'm going to get a, a catherine picture and i'm going to put that quote in it that's that's going it's going up don't make eye contact with the fish but mm. check for details in the eyeball <laughs> ah, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no. It is remarkably similar to um, like Jager crossing him back in the day. I remember he was saying, you know, you want to be able to see all the scars on the side of the fish and all the detail. Like that's one way to know that you are starting to get close enough to to some of these fish in the big, you know, open blue water. Is that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because they, you know, the amount of fish I've just fired off it going like oh yeah this is this is a nice size fish and mm. you know, i can see it it's, it's very close no no the water's just very clear and it's a very large fish far away yeah so yeah. I've, uh, I, I am i am getting better trust me but i just get so trigger happy sometimes and i just fire off yeah. and i'm not ready i once i once shot at a black marlin from about 10 meters away um so if that makes you feel any better um that was the point of it but yeah, I felt incredibly stupid. Like it was not even like reasonable what I did. Like the other guys were laughing at me, and I, I felt remarkably silly. But I think it's just what you do when you're out in the blue open water, and you and you do see these big fish. I think it's a, it's your knee jerk reaction. It's just you want to shoot it. So I get it. That's right. And I mean, it it does it does take a while to sort of get back in the swing of things. And man, it's just yeah, it's it's quite, it's quite tough. Eh? It's quite tough not to pull the trigger, but that's one thing I've really learned is just don't pull the trigger till you're ready. Don't rush the shot. Okay, the last cool. thing you want to do is uh, you know have a beautiful fish rip out on you. Yeah, yeah. So what about in terms of like your body position when you shoot a wahoo and where where did you shoot for and what do you think is your sort of your go to shot on these fish? Yeah, so a lot of people have some very conflicting um, places they want to shoot their wahoo some people aim for the tail because they reckon that sort of disables them a bit but honestly just on the lateral line behind the behind the eye that's all yeah and just kind of aiming for the spine just like a a really good chunky holding shot Mm -hmm. okay and while while i sort of um heading away from you slightly um oh yeah so i mean um 
they, they are quite curious, so they will come up to you. Um, once, once they come on the flashy, so that you dive down nice and nice and relaxed, just a couple of nice big kicks, um, just sink down if you can, get on their level, swim away from them if you can, cause, uh, or swim alongside them, and they'll, they'll often swim alongside you, sort of pop your gun out and see if you can get just a wee bit closer before they kind of start to move off and then, and then take your shot. Mm, cool. Yeah, yeah, just kind of calm, deliberate movements. Do you want to increase your bottom time and uh, lower your comfortable operating depth? Of course you do. I've got a great offer for you. It's the 28-day freediving transformation can be found at noobspiro.com forward slash TED. You can learn how to increase your bottom time, dive deeper using proven freediving training techniques in the comfort of your own home. And the great thing about the 28-day freediving transformation is you only need a small investment of time. You need 25 to 40 minutes, three days a week, and five minutes on two of the other days. And you can significantly improve your freediving performance in in only 28 days. Check it out at noobspiro.com forward slash TED. And jump on the 28-day freediving transformation. When I finally get to go out spearfishing, I want to keep things simple. I want to get in the water, use basic gear that's not going to break down on me. I want to have a good time and shoot some fish. And today's sponsor, Killshot Spear Guns, make a spear gun that's absolutely perfect for that. Ed Martin, designer, builder, and manufacturer of more than 1,000 spear guns, likes to keep these guns simple, effective, and dependable. Check them out at killshotspearguns.com. Use the code NOOB for a limited time only. Save some dough, some moolah, some dosh, some cheddar. I can't even do the cheddar thing. Save some money. That's all I can say. Killshotspearguns.com. Um, Duncan, he uh, asked me. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> he wants to know what thought means. T H O T. Um, use it. You use it. A, bit of a uh, 2019 internet slang word, I guess. Thought okay. means for that stands for that hoe over there. So, um, so I, I just say I think it's a funny word. Thought. Like, I'm like, I oh, come here, little thotty, like talking to some of my girl mates. I'm like, little thotty, this thotty, that. So, um, I've done, um, done a bit of thought cam on my, on my Instagram page. Like, I sort of zoom in on my friends, like, oh, thought cam, what's this thought up to, sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Look, trust me, it's funny. You have to be there at the time. Sounds shit over Skype, but hey, yeah. that's fishing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, thanks, thanks, Duncan, for that. Hey, what's that? Yeah, there's a few trendy sayings. I just, I can't keep up with them. Sometimes I Google them, and then I feel like a loser for not knowing. But most of the time, I just carry on rolling on. I don't even use hashtags. My Instagram is pitiful. <laughs> but what do you do? You know, what do you do? You just have fun with it, and that's all you can do. I, um, look, I, I can proudly admit I had to I had to Google. TLDR, because I was like, what, what's, what does tilde mean? What, what does it mean? Too long, didn't read. So if you've got a big big spell oh. at the end, you're at right? T- TL, TLDR, like too long, didn't read. This is the very brief description of my story above. But it's more of a, it's more of a Reddit thing, but hey, different different media. I like the, I like the people that um, always just want to promote their own profile in the comments. They're, they're great. Sometimes I want to respond to them and just get a sort of like a bit of a, bit of banter going but most of the time we can't be bothered so. oh and on your page when people say like hey if you like this check out my page oh you're a mad hustler if you like hustling content come to yeah. at hustling 69 doc you know whatever or whatever it is you know it's 69, like 69 eh? something it's pitiful you know? dinner for two always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i haven't heard that one for a while jeez <laughs> well you're married aren't you no, divorced. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> oh, fuck. No, it's all good. That wasn't rough at all. Um, Sorry, I'm just going to hang up real quiet. No, no, real good segue from that. Um, yeah. Tough, toughest situation. <laughs> Um, like when you've been out spearfishing and not in a relationship, nothing to do with relationships. What's uh, what's one of the toughest situations you've had? What 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 sort of what ended up happening and what did you learn from it? I think the toughest spearfishing situation I've ever had is probably this conversation with you. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> 
I just tried to drink water then and it came up my nose. Well done. Thank you so much. Oh, look, I don't mean to have a harp on about Wahoo, but I'm slightly obsessed with them, eh? So um, probably the toughest situation I've had, uh, it's one of those moments, you know, when it's as, as the GoPro, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like this enigma that surrounds the GoPro. You'll battle away on it with the GoPro on your fucking forehead for hours oh, yeah. and you're taking these stupid little seven eight second videos oh no this no never mind this is not going to be any good turn it off save the battery save the space and everything so yeah. suddenly you're, you're battling with the gopro then when it runs out of battery this epic shit happens and you're like mm. oh you know awesome now that's real cool yeah. so uh this this particular day um i was out without johnny in rarotonga um i was out with this guy called teddy he's a like a tahitian sniper he's this epic little sparrow man um and we're out sort of doing a meat run. We're like, oh, we'll grab some wahoo for, you know, for the fish market and all that stuff. Uh, and here I am trying to trying to get a thumper. Like I'm, I'm obsessed with shooting a big wahoo. That's kind of my – that's my life goal. <laughs> like I'm just going to put it out there now. Like my life goal is to shoot a thumper wahoo. I'll just oh. love that day. Eh? So, yeah. Anyway, um, so I get this one. Um, get this one coming up nice and close. And I'm like, shit, this could be it, eh? Hey? This could be it. I'm down on its level. I'm looking at it. It's looking at me. I'm not so not supposed to be looking at it, but it's looking at me and sort of, oh, what are you doing? And then the, the spear just like flies right through it. And I was like, oh, oh, cool. Now you got that, Teddy? Okay, sweet. I guess this is your one. Thanks, now, all good, man. You Now you go. That's fine. I'll just chill. I'll just chill. No, no you first. No, off you go. But it was, it was a bit of a meat run. So I'm like, no, no, all good. And I sort of said to him beforehand, I was like, you know, it doesn't really matter. Like if, if the opportunity presents itself, like, you know, your no. fish don't, don't be like, oh no, is this your fish? I'm like, no, it's of course, just go for it. So that, that was kind of, um, no, ge- no gentlemen in spearfishing. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no gentle ladies either. Like, let's be honest. Um, mm. yeah. So then mm. after that, I was like, oh yeah, I, Swimming back to the boat um, with him, and I see this thing that looks like a marlin under the boat. But it was it was this wahoo, and it was oh my god, it was amazing. It was so huge, and it <laughs> that that bolted off. Anyway, that's that's nothing to do with the story. Actually, um, it's just a little little snippet I've got. Uh, then managed to shoot this other wahoo that came in at thirty kegs, but I shot it in the guts it wasn't a great shot and it took off and i just let all the floats go and everything as you should do let it tire out and i was using a 130 rob allen with a double flopper so i wasn't using a slip tip yeah. and i was like no 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 she'll be right she'll be right so i was i was pulling her up and stuff and this looks all good then i see one of the floppers sticking out oh no and i'm like oh cool right so this is literally just this fish is just hanging on with one flopper and the skin so a little technique that I've kind of, I don't know if anyone else does it, I'm sure they do, but instead of bringing the fish all the way, all the way to the surface, I keep the tension on and I dive down to it and then I yeah. and then I grab it in the water because I'm sure fish know when they're coming up to the surface, they start thrashing and freaking out. The kingfish are great for it, you know, they just start going absolutely ballistic. So um, I dive down to this wahoo and I'm like, all right, come here, buddy. So I, I go down and I wrap my arm around behind the back of its head and the spear falls out. Oh, yeah. So it's just me and this free swimming from about eight metres to the surface. Yeah. It's And it's still got a wee bit of life in it. And I'm just like, oh, shit, shit, here we go. So I'm sort of flying around in my, around the back trying to get my knife out and stuff. And so I, I managed to get one hand, my left hand on the gills, and my right hand had a knife. And thinking, like, if I let go of this fish, this is gone. Like, it's 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 gone for the night. So mm. all, all the boatman sees is... Um, me on the surface with a swahu, mouth open, thrashing side to side, and I'm going like trying to, I'm just stabbing it at thin air, basically just trying to get the knife in the head. <laughs> and um, and everyone on the boat just look at me with a open mouth, yeah. just going, "You absolute fuckwit!" And so I bring the fish over, like, "Hey guys, hey guys, got the fish? Yeah, shaft fell out, you know." So that was close. They're like, "We thought we were going to take you to the hospital, like that." <laughs> Because <laughs> their teeth are quite sharp. They're like yeah, that yeah. fish jaw. That those fish teeth were so close to your neck. Mm. I was like, "Oh, was it? Was it? Oh yeah. No, that's cool. <laughs> 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 Just completely oblivious as usual to anything, any of my, any of my surroundings." But yeah, that, that was probably that was probably my toughest situation. Um, just being being so unaware, yeah, of of kind of the danger I was putting myself in. I like your technique. They're like. I've had that happen to me as well, and I've swam down onto a fish, but you do run a risk. 
Like, um, if you do get a hand in the gill plate, then you're generally pretty safe. But the teeth are, and when the and the thrashing, particularly with the big fish, I mean that fish is probably half, half you know half your size. That's a, like and they're way more powerful, you know. So yeah, well, they're just ooh. so long, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, takeaways. Yeah, yeah, I do eat takeaways. Yeah, um, I do like uh, Vietnamese food. Yeah, I follow you on Instagram. I can see you eat a lot of takeaways. So you didn't even have yeah, to no, mention it. But. Takeaways from that. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, just look, just be more aware. I mean, everyone makes stupid mistakes in the water, but just slowing it all down, I guess. Yeah. Would you? Would 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 could you have yelled for a second gun or a second shot, or was it? Was it? Were they too far away? No, no, I w- it was just me and the fish. Just me and the fish. The boat was. Yeah, though they um that's the great thing a lot of a lot of diving i've done uh off is off boats and usually the boatman's not too far away which is really good but i was like oh, i'll just i'll just give it a wee crack i'll just give it a wee you know give it a give it a go see if i can land it by myself and stuff and you know not make too much of a mess of it because the last thing i wanted to do was lose the fish but um no it was it was very close to ending quite badly for me big big fish with a with a spear hanging out of them it's like when they're still alive, they definitely run a risk. Like I've had one throwing at me in the boat, uh, 20 kilo kingfish while it's still alive. wasn't a particularly great shot. Cheapest, there was just blood going everywhere. This thing's just thrashing around. The the shaft smashing into the boat owner's paint. I'm just looking at the whole thing going, what the fuck? We, you know, but it's, you know, particularly if there's sharks around, I, I kind of get it. But, um, yeah, like if you're going to hand up a thrashing fish, at least like hand it up. Don't throw it up. So. You don't. Yeah, I, I think some people do freak out at, at the moment and just adrenaline gets a bit too much for them. They just go, oh, yeah, land the fish sort of thing. It's like, yeah, that's all That's all cool and stuff. But we're seeing more and more spear-related injuries as the sport is growing. Uh, you see, yeah, did you see that fish the other day going through that guy's a nice fish? I don't even think that was spearing. I saw some girl's foot and she had a, sh- uh, a spear shaft stuck in her foot because she jumped back up onto his jet ski and um, he had the spear gun laying down the side. And uh, that, looked, that looked pretty memorable. Um, and, I've, and having recently dived off a jet ski for the first time, I can sort of see how it could happen quite easily. Hey, so how did you find it, by the way? I loved it, eh? Freaking loved it, yeah. I thought it was going to be awkward, just like two blokes on a little jet ski. And we, we went... Did you go butt to butt? Uh, nah, like... A big seat. spoon, a little spoon? Um... We we had turns at, at at different spooning positions, but essentially face, face. No, we never did that. That could have that that could have been good. I would have I would have I would have rocked it. Who would drive though? Like obviously the one. How was it though? Um, his seat had those contours, so there was no contact. It was excellent. Um, but it was magic. Like oh, I really loved the maneuverability, just the ability to zip over and get somewhere really fast. I wouldn't want to like motor out for you know longer than probably forty minutes. Um, cause it's just bashing into it sometimes, but, um, I loved it. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. And of course you just get catted up on the beach, then get on and go, right? Yeah, pretty much. And then, um, he had one line sort of that, and you just strung, strung everybody your kit through it. Um, so, you know, if, if something fell off, the whole line just started dragging in the water behind it and you just tied it up, but we never had any dramas and, um, all the fish just go down in the footwell. Um, he had a bit of an esky there, but yeah, it was, it was easy. It was it was really fun. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, no, I've always wondered about that, eh? But then you sort of think, what happens if you get separated from the jet ski? Yeah, well, generally, like, I mean, if, if there's current, uh, why don't you can use it as a float, and then you're doing a drift dive anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's definitely a concern there. If you anchor up and into current, um, that, could be, that could be pretty shit. <laughs> so, yeah, or if the anchor slips as well. So that's another, that'd be another joy. Must well, uh, give it a go sometime, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good for short short runs. You don't want a long motor in it, but um, yeah, I liked it. Hey, let's move into Veterans Vault, the most disqualified female Spiro in New Zealand. Um, give us some examples, some stories of some um, memorable disqualifications. Oh, I've got um, I've actually kind of got three. I uh, guess. Yeah, the, the first <laughs> the first one was at the 2016 Nationals uh, first comp. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll give this one a go. Dive in the women's four hours later. Uh, it turns out we're a peninsula further than we thought we were. So we were 30 seconds back to the, late back to the triangle. And late's late. You're, you're gone. Oh, so I was, um, I was pretty gutted to, to be late for that one, since, especially since I shot my first boar fish. Oh. And uh, I think I was the only one over the whole weekend and week that did shoot a boar fish. So that would have got the most mer- meritorious 
Um, but it didn't because I got DQ'd. 30 seconds late. Yeah, but, you know, that's it. Late's late. Um, and so next year, oh, you know, give it a go. I'll have a watch this time instead of my, my sweeve. Yep, all good. Got a watch this time. Uh, I absolutely gave it my all. I was like, yeah, I really want to place in the women's. It'll be really cool. That's kind of my, my goal is to sort of go top three. It'd be pretty cool. So I dived pretty hard that day. And now I see everyone's going back to the triangle. I was like, oh, man, why are they all going back? We've still got like 10 minutes. I might just nip out to that point just to make sure there's not a kingy there or something. And you know, all the other pairs swing past. I'm going, oh, yeah, I guess everyone's just tired, you know, going back. And then safety boat comes over and he goes, Catherine, what are you doing? I was like, what do you mean what am I doing? We've still got five minutes. He goes, no. Time's up. Oh, no. Like, no, I've got five minutes, mate, pointed at my watch. And uh, what happened is I bumped something on my watch and throughout the day or, yeah, I, I lost I lost time over the on the game time over the day. But, man, oh, I was gutted. And turns out I had the winning catch as well for, for women, so, <laughs> uh, which doesn't mean anything. Uh, oh, no. Two time errors. Yeah, and then um, then the third one. I don't actually think anyone knows about this third one. I've kept this one under wraps. Um, do you know the cat, the catfish cull that they do every year down Lake Tarpon? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, I'll go down to that. It's always a bit of fun. So I go down and stay the night in Taupo from Auckland, which is you know four, three four hour drive. Get up early, go get a coffee, uh, drive down to the the briefing. Obviously, briefings mandatory. And I read the briefing time wrong, eh? So I'm nearly there, but the briefing's been over for half an hour. And if you don't attend the briefing, you can't dive. So uh, I was like, oh, fuck this. So I turned around. I turned around and went back to Auckland and bought, a, bought some Foo Fighters tickets off Trevi because I love the Foo's. Uh, I was like, fuck it. So I just went back to Auckland and went to the Foo Fighters. <laughs> but I kept that one. I kept that one pretty, uh, pretty down low. Like, yeah, no, I didn't want to even do the stupid catfish colour anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in Taupo that morning? <laughs> yeah, so what? I had my I had my dive gear too, and what? They are all rough DQs. They're rough. Oh, look, it's Jesus. my own fault, you know. Like, oh, I just got to get better time management, I think. Oh, I think so. Anyone that, anyone that knows me is like, you know, you're to blame. I'm like, yes, yes, I've never blamed you. anyone else. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Do better. I'm like, uh, I'll yeah, try. I'll give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so, ratchet. Yeah, a, a good a good tip, and um, you know, if you want to qualify for Inter Pacifics or whatever, if you're if you're diving in New Zealand or the Open, or uh, you get a watch, um, check your time. It's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you'd be like one of those persons people now that go go out with like a watch on your forehead, one on each arm, and then maybe like alarms everywhere as well. Oh, look, I'm going to give it a crack this year as well. Um, so you know, you know, maybe this year, maybe this year, we'll just have to wait and see the uh, nationals is in April. Big takeaways: time management. Um, what are some other? Oh, so sorry. When's the next comp? Okay, what April, is it? April. Uh, that's the that's the nationals for us in, in New Zealand. But I'm horrendously unfit. I've just been doing a lot of work and no diving over the last three four months. So um, okay. going to get back into it. I've never done any pool sessions or anything, so I should probably do that or probably do a free diving class or something and, and get some techniques down pat, get a bit dive fit and then give it you're a good a bit, crack. You're a bit spoiled in Auckland. I mean, there's advantages to being a Jaffa. You've got spearfishing fundamentals there. You've got uh, Auckland, what are they, the Blue Water Club or something? Uh, Auckland. Free divers, Auckland free divers. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think uh, Jeremy Vile does a Zine 1 on Newmarket every Thursday and you've got yeah, right. other things uh, you stand up there. But um. Yeah, I mean, you've also you've also got a lot of pubs uh, which do clash with the nights of the freediving classes, and <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so and then you've also got yeah you know, you've got your food, you've got your beers, and uh, that's far easier to do than going and lying face down in a pool going I got four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I can hundred percent relate. I I went to training last night because I've got a big trip in the next month over to New Zealand. And um, I'm going up Three Kings to chase Kings with uh, Nat Davey and Rochelle, po uh, Rochelle Potter, is that it? Rochelle Potter. Oh, man, those guys are yeah. machines. You'll be in very good hands up. Yeah, I'm looking forward to interviewing Rochelle as well. That'll be awesome. Oh, mate, she's got some stories, I tell you. Um, she has shot some crazy fish over the years. I eh? um, 
down there in poll spare. So, oh, is she, does she do much on the poll? I think she does, hey? Mm, I'm not sure, to be honest. I um, I follow uh, I follow her along a little bit, but I haven't. I don't know too much about her. She's not as um, you know, she doesn't share as much as 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 some people do on social media. So it'd be really cool to just sort of dig into you know, yeah, some of the lessons learned. She, I think she's got the woman's world record for yellowtail kingfish as well, which is she sure cool. does. Yeah, forty eight yeah. or forty nine. Oh, it's just huge. Humans, I think it is. it's a big fish, considering the men's record uh, is is it fifty or is it forty nine point something? Yeah, it's 50 is it Nick or Nick Bulgaris? Is it that got that's got the forty nine point something? Nah, Nat's got fifty point two or something. Did they did that one get approved? Oh, I don't know. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a big fish, a eh? cracking fifty kilos. Holy. Mm. So anyway, so I went to training last night and I was just woeful. I was pitiful. It was terrible. Um, and it's a it's a real humbling experience, <laughs> especially when you've been all right at it before and then you go back and you're just like, oh, gee, we're starting from scratch again. But I'll um, I'll go tomorrow and and hopefully everything will start coming back again. Yeah, yeah. My my method is just you don't go in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> just just get diverted to a pub on the way. Just don't yeah. start. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, what are some of the other? Because um, most of your stuff's been about time management of getting disqualified from tournaments. What are some of the other stories or horror stories you've had about DQs? Oh, I haven't had any other uh, DQ stories, um, but I've got an, I've got a horror story uh, about a fish. It's a, it's a very good learning curve. Um, don't shoot a fish if you don't know what it is. Oh, this is a big one. Pretty common too. I mean, you know, you hear people go, you know, shoot now, ask later. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I get that. And I've definitely been guilty of that. I think one of the first fish I shot in New Zealand was a red mokey. Um, yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sweet, a snapper. I've <laughs> 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 been there. Like, if, if you show me a sparrow in New Zealand that has never shot a red mokey, please. Um, yeah. So there's, there's that, eh? But um, I was – Diving in um, California with with Forrest, and we were diving for ha- uh, halibut on. It's a kind of a surf beach. It was kind of a you know big public beach, mm. and he's like, "Oh yeah, just out there past the waves and everything. You know, it should be nice sandy bottoms. There could be some halibut there." And we're like, "And I'm like, yeah, man, that's awesome. Like, I'd absolutely love to shoot a halibut." Mm. So I go down. Um, we're looking around. There's heaps of rays everywhere. We're all quite separated. Uh, it was um, you would have heard of Matt Lind, uh, Matt Lind, Forrest, myself, sort of all separated out there for a bit. And I go over and I find this thing, and it looks like a little nostril sticking out from the sand. And I'm like, oh my god, it's a it's a halibut, it's a halibut. So I fin on this area for about 15 minutes until I got someone's attention. So Matt eventually comes over, and I was like, hey, look, what do you reckon, halibut? He's like, yeah, man. I'm like, should shoot it? He goes, yeah. So I go down there and I plug it straight in between the nostrils and I start pulling this thing up and all of a sudden these big wings come up. Hell of it, you know? I was like, oh. And then it just keeps coming and coming and then this, this big tail comes out. Oh, and no. I was like, whoa, 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 what? And then all these fins come up and I'm like, what is this? And then before I know it, this angel shark is just thrashing on the surface, oh, and I've shit. got my <laughs> I've got my real gun, and it's just doing laps around me. I'm like, oh, I'm scared. He's like, Yeah, I know you. I just been here to settle down. I'm still quite green to spearfishing here at this stage, yeah. and um, and I was like, Oh, I'll just I'll just like cut my line. Should I cut my line? He goes, Yeah. Well, well what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut you, we'll cut your line. We'll force the spear through, and we'll get your spear back and we'll retie it back on. Where's your knife? I'm like, Oh, well, I don't have my knife, do I? <laughs> <laughs> so there he is with his teeth trying to undo trying to undo uh this line so what he did he, he went down this poor shark was cruising around with this spear sticking out of its noggin looked like a little remote control shark with an with an antenna sticking out uh he goes down forces it all the way through then all of a sudden there's this shark necklace this is all sort of shark sort of settles back in the sand it doesn't seem to be phased by having a a hole put through it right through its head um so he, he eventually got, uh, does it pulls pulls the line back out and the shark swam off absolutely fine mm-hmm. it's really bizarre and i would like to think it lived yeah um yeah. and uh that was just like there was a that was just i felt absolutely terrible with that you know thinking that i'd sh- i was going to shoot a halibut and then shooting an angel shark um, <laughs> 
<laughs> Little did I know at the time. Very different. Little yeah. did I know at the time uh, that they um, they are a bit of a trophy fish over there. And um, and Forrest is going, oh man, angel shark. I've only seen a handful of those. You're so lucky. I can't believe you didn't land it. I'm like, oh look, I didn't know. I don't know about dragging a shark up to a, on. A public, public beach. beach when people are having picnics. No, I'm mm. not keen on that hate. So it did swim away uh, seemingly unscathed. So, um, so, yeah, so that's that's another wee story of my um, little fuck-up. <laughs> little fuck-up sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I love the honesty. Um, yeah. Like, I, I don't want to start a shit fight here, um, and we can just skip this question if you like, but um, there's a lot of shark love and shark hate and – shark confusion out there um what what's your kind of take on it like i had some mad hate mail from this dude once because i said something ignorant in a podcast about um sharks off brisbane are overpopulated or something like this and um i was talking about dusky whalers and at the time like if you went spearfishing you got swarmed and it was ridiculous they were everywhere and um but now they seem to have calm down and I don't know what's happened but everything's settled down it's much easier out there now but it was just like this weird season of it and then so I made a comment offhand comment on a podcast got this mad hate mail about it and um sharks seem like a real crazy sort of political area at the moment have you got a, a opinion on it that, that you'd care to share mate I've got an opinion on everything um whether you want to hear or not. Yeah. Look, sharks are they are they are so such a taboo subject at the moment. I think it's mm. uh, even people that don't spend any time in the water, they're like, oh no, sharks, you're in their environment. Yeah. Don't hurt the sharks. And you're like, yeah, yeah, no, I get that. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I get that. Like, don't go and unnecessarily hurt any mm. animal that you're not going to eat. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my motto. Um, I know that there are some spots in New Zealand, definitely Australia as well, that uh, get overrun by sharks. All you have to do is you have to fire your gun and they show up. You don't even have to shoot yeah. a fish. Yeah. You just, the, the clack of your gun going off and you've got a couple of bronzies hanging around and you're like, oh, yep, cool. I know you're here for a free feed. Mm. Um, yeah, look. This Pavlovian response. It's like they hear this bear gun, it's like they associate it with a free feed and, and they show up. And it's um, drawling and all, yeah. And some people say, like, you know, shark cage diving is kind of also causes. It's like they show up for a feed because they're chum in the water and then all of a sudden they see people in the water and they get used to being around people in the water and they realise we're not a threat because most of the time we're behind cages or whatever and then all of a sudden they see free swimming, free divers or swimmers and some of them maybe are opportunistic. I don't know about this argument. I've heard it. Um, it does sound like there's some sort of anecdotal sense to it, but gee, what a shit fight, eh? Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I do not agree with cage diving at all. No. Um, you know, you are associating humans with food, mm-hmm. and I'm not cool with that. I'm not cool being in the water with a shark that knows, like, hey, if I harass this person enough, this mm-hmm. is where the food comes from. Like, I've, I've never seen a great white in the water, um, and, man, I would uh, – <laughs> Uh, I would certainly hate to bump into one that's just been nudging a cage for a for a free feed um, mm. and rattling up some people. So, um, yeah, I I don't agree with cage diving. I do think there are some areas that are overpopulated by. Sharks. I definitely, um, if you can avoid feeding sharks, I think that's great. In all sense of the word, uh, if you if you're charming up and stuff, and it's just so it's just so hard. I'm not. I don't think I'm actually qualified to answer the question. Mm. No, nah, but this is a problem. See, none of us are, and we and we and we don't want to get embroiled in a ship fight either. And I know, it's like, and you, yeah, you, I know a um a, a great shark scientist uh, mm. from Rarotonga. Um, her name is Jess Adwater. Okay. And I um she's she's told me some great things about sharks and shark behaviours and everything, and and I'd love to learn more from her. But basically, don't feed them, don't touch them. <laughs> But it's kind of hard if you're spear fishing and you're, you're about to get nudged. Then, of course, you touch them. You touch them with the end of your spear. You give them a good jab, and then they they usually swim off, um, or well, at least for the time being. Mm. But uh, yeah, I think I think feeding sharks in general is a big no no. Mm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. That's as far as I can go. Yeah, um, yeah. As far as shooting sharks and stuff goes, I mean, I, I know I know a few people that have shot sharks, but. Um, I can't say I completely agree with that unless you're going to eat it, but there's so much, there's so many eating fish that there's mm. no need to take a, a big animal like that. Um, mm. Unless it has, 
exhibited some extremely aggressive behaviour. Yeah, no, nah, cool. All good. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm going to open that can of worms at some stage in the future and get a couple of couple of experts on and uh, hopefully some people with some contrasting opinions as well and just um, try and just just learn a bit more. Pod, uh, podcast going. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've listened and I have watched a few, and sometimes the conversations degrade, and they, there's not they're not they're not they're not real useful. It's probably I'm probably better off interviewing each one of them and then maybe coordinating it. But anyway, thought, thoughts for another day. So, yeah, um, that's food for thought. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, veterans' fault. Um, just closing out DQs and, and any of that sort of stuff like um, landing records. Did you have any further comments or are we going to move on to some funny stuff? Oh, look, um, no, I don't really have any, uh, don't really have any closing, comments, uh, closing comments on that. No, I've kind of... You've exhausted it. It's, I've exhausted it, man. I'm trying to... You're just flogging bury, a dead shark now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to bury those DQs, but, um, yeah. but I don't mind a bit of self-deprecating humour, so I would kind of keep bringing it up. And, and just like the DQs, I'm, I've just got myself to blame. <laughs> so I, I guess I guess like you, everyone's got to read the competition rules and just pay attention to when the briefing is, when the when you've got to be back at the boat ramp. Just um, and and uh, maybe two people wear a watch each or something, um, or have yeah. a boat. Yeah. Upgrading your fins is something that I think every single Spiro goes through within their spearfishing journey. And today's sponsor, Penetrator Fins, have been around for a long time. They've got a lot of proprietary technology goes into their fins, and what that means is that Larry at Penetrator has produced a set of fins that are second to none. And Penetrator Fins back this up with a beyond industry standard warranty. They've got a three-year warranty against breakage on any composite blades and a one-year warranty on carbon fibre blades. There's a baby's bum finish. There's no friction here. These fins are immaculate for getting you to glide through the ward with maximum economy. If you pair a penetrator fin up with a good foot pocket too, you, you're going to have a much different experience spearfishing. You're going to be able to go further and longer, and you're also going to have a lot less fatigue at the end of the day. Check them out, penetratorfins.com. Use the code name Spiro. Is that more spearfishing shit? Yeah, it is, honey, but it's my favourite podcast. You just kind of stop yourself. You're obsessed. Well, that's true, but Shrek told me I'd, I'd lose my 90s dad look. Baby, it's all for you. For those that are a little obsessed, head over to noobspirit.com forward slash mad gear. Got hats, beanies, tank tops, t-shirts and hoodies for noobers who are mad about spearing. Noobspirit.com forward slash mad gear. Hey, um, funny stuff. What's a funny moment you've had out sparing? I would say that, sorry, was the um, angel shark not good enough for you? <laughs> I, 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 I thought it was it was funny, but kind of like in a in a tragic sort in of a really <laughs> tragic sort of like <laughs> you dumbass, what are you? Doing? Nah, nah, I think yeah, I think it's honest. We've all we've all done it. Like you say, the red monkey in New Zealand's a typical example. I know, right? Yeah, like um. This one time, I, I don't know if I'll mention who, who I was diving with because I don't know if she wants to be dragged into my uh, my story. But um, mm. myself and another very well-known female spearfisher woman from, from New Zealand, uh, we were diving in a comp uh, together and we were both like, oh, man, nature's calling. And like <laughs> like I said earlier, you know, <laughs> girls poop. <laughs> girls got to poop. You can't dive if you've got to poop. So, um mm. So we um, we found this little this little rock uh, out of <laughs> Whangarei, and it's almost like it had these inbuilt cubicles. Poo rock, oh no! <laughs> Poops and poop rock. Um, yeah, so we so we kind of took to a cubicle each. It was like, well, it's going to be done. So we uh, we did. We went and did our business. Safety boat drives past. We give them a wave. It's very clear what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> of course, with long johns, you got to take your, practically your whole suit off. Mm. See, there you got to. A couple of chicks in bikinis wearing, you know, um, you know with, all, with all our gear sort of splayed up on the rocks and we're just sort of <laughs> <laughs> going about our biz. Uh, and then it wasn't until um, wasn't until later at prize giving, it was actually the, the Hook versus Spear um, tournament up in, okay. up in uh, Ruakaka, um, the Marsden Cove actually. Um, and they go, oh, yeah, and uh, we've got a special prize for two young ladies that 
had to go when nature called. And so basically we got a we got a prize each. We actually had a dive bag each, which was a really good prize for taking a shit on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I am coming over to do a New Zealand comp. That sounds like an award I can win. Hey, look, New Zealand comps are all just like pooping and being dis- being disqualified. It's great. It's a great time. Then you get to drink some beers afterwards. Yeah, nice. Now, um, I'm definitely going to make my way over for one sooner or later. Um, I'm, I'm curious, what's in your dive bag? Give us your New Zealand dive gear. A couple of uh, empty Wakachini bottles, um, a, a hairbrush. Yeah. Conditioner. No, so just just a normal at the moment. Uh, so this time of year, still running 5.3, so 5 mil top, 3 mil bottoms. I'm going to definitely change to 3.3 three, three, three. Okay. Surely, though, fins, masks, snorkel, gloves, booties, just just your just your basic setup. Um, but I don't have anything special. Um, You're sponsored by a Kiwi Weight Belt Company, aren't you? Oh yeah, no. So um, so my good friend Esther, yeah. So uh, she makes her own weight belts, the Kiwi weight belts, which are silicon, mm. and they uh, they come in a variety of awesome colours, which is um, which is pretty cool. So it's just something that in the past has been a little bit bit boring as weight belts, but um. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, even just the white ones make make your kit look so much better, especially if you're oh, – they do, though. It's just it's a little thing. Is it the Marseille um, belt style uh, with the pin rather rather than the buckle? That's the one. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. And uh, I've just started trialling um, – so a lot of people use cable ties to tie on their drummers or whatever to um, – to a bit of kelp uh, if they're going to snoop for snapper, if they're burling in for snapper. So okay. what I started doing, because the last thing you want is to, a shark to come and take away your cable tie and everything. That's just putting a, a big chunk of plastic in the ocean for no reason. Um, mm. And it's happened, I think, twice to me before, and I've just felt like dirt about it. So what I've done is I've started chopping up flax and cutting that down lengthways, leaving about two and a half, three inches of it quite solid and then sort of bending the rest then what I do is I thread that through the fish, then tie it to the kelp at the bottom. So if that then gets taken away by fish, a uh, larger fish or, or a shark, then you don't have to worry. You don't have that on your mind about, you know, basically just leaving plastic in the ocean. So it's just a bit of flax. Yeah, nice. It's quite cool. So I'm just, yeah, just trialing that at the moment, which is pretty good. So flax for, flax for non-Kiwis, how would you describe it? Flax is a, oh, yeah. It's, it is a Kiwi thing, isn't it? Mm, 100%. It's, um, it's Grass on steroids. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> imagine, imagine the biggest strain. Imagine the biggest blade of grass you've seen in your life, and then times it by four thousand. That's flax. And it's and and like Ma- it's, it's Maori horrible. people traditionally like wove baskets and shit out of it and clothing. Yeah, and wove stuff. everything. It's mm. it's very universal and it's plentiful as well. And you'll often find it growing near roadsides or sort of damp areas. Um, yeah, so you can go and. Chop off a couple of uh, the outside leaves, or what would they be, leaves? Yeah, blades, blades, leaves, yeah, yeah something. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, so that's that's, what's, that's what flax is. Um, but I think everyone's got Google these days. Just, mm-hmm. just check in flax on your, uh, on your browser and uh, take a wee peek at grass on steroids. Yeah, we should give them any – maybe we should just, like, have a little bit of Kiwi vocab in this so, you know, just people can understand, maybe chur – and s- yeah, some of the other pizzas, the other. sweet yeah. yena. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think we're quite similar to Canadians in that, aren't we? Mm, well, I I don't like the comparison. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's more yeah, it's maybe. more the A at the end. The the A is like, oh yeah, could have done better than that. A. Eh? I think the A is almost like a, a positive infliction to end a sentence. Yeah, freaking A. Frickin' yeah. eight, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Almost made it. <laughs> yeah, cool. Hey, all right, um, Spiro Q&A, some faster, faster style questions. Um, who's been the most influential person or people in your sphere? Uh, I would say personally for me, uh, I call him Uncle Kent. He's not my uncle, um, but he is the uncle to – some of New Zealand's best and worst female divers. Uh, so that guy's great. He's um, he's always keen to go out on dive trips. He lives up in Whangarei. Uh, he takes out the likes of, um, you know, Sophie and Alex Edwards and all that. Um, yeah. So he's great. He's very patient. Oh, cool. Um, and he'll just he'll just sort of go at your pace, your pace, and um, 
probably the best part about going out on the boat with him is that there's always time for a pack of bickies and lunch. Oh, nice. I'm a bit of a lazy diver in case you haven't figured that one out already. But, <laughs> um, you know, he's, he's – I wouldn't say – Influential. If I want to, if I want to talk about a proper influencer, I'd definitely say um, Kimmy Swimmy, Kimmy, Kimmy Winner. Uh, mm. She is incredible, and one day I'd just love to meet her. Eh? Mm. Yeah. But um, it's uh, it's funny. I do have a, a little bit of a, an idol um, in NZ Spear Fishing, and that's. Have you heard of Alex Edwards before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I nearly teed up an interview with both of you guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that would have been that would have been wicked. Actually, next time though. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, she's um, she's. She's away doing a bit of commercial diving at the moment, but um, oh, sick. She's a machine. Yeah, she um, she deserves her own podcast actually. Uh, yeah, no, um, she's she's fantastic. So she's an absolute slayer. She's wise beyond her years, and on it, we've got this chat group of um, of chick sparrows. So we've got myself, um, Esther, Sophie, and of course Alex as well. And um, we call her we call her Mavis because she's either sixty five plus or thirteen. She's actually, I think she's actually 18 at the moment, but um, yeah, she's she's either wise beyond her years or just so clueless. It's brilliant, but she's one hell of a diver, and, and if I could one day be the half a diver as, as she is, I'd be, I'd be stoked. She's got great time management too. That <laughs> chick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that group chat called the Aquaturd Sisters? No, it's actually called Pathots. Yeah, like it's obviously a play on word for uh, for pathos, but with the thoughts in it, yeah, as um, as Duncan mentioned earlier, yeah. Nice. Okay. Cool. Shout out to the pathos there. Cool. Um, so, what's kind of your next fish goal, like species? Ah, oh, species. That's a tough one, man. So, uh, I would love, absolutely love, to get a, a, a twenty pound snapper. Yeah, that's that's been my goal for a couple of years, and like I mentioned earlier, I'd love to get an absolute thumper wahoo, but um, I've got to actually put some time into snapper snooping, and and even if I can barely one in, that would be quite good. But uh, there's yeah, there's been some beautiful fish landed this summer. Um, Kiwi sparrow poppy mac managed a twenty pound snapper a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'd love that actually. Give me a bit of that, yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of my goal. Um, I just need to be a little bit more uh, proactive and maybe spend some time in the water. It's very hard. Mm. It's, it's the thing I find it's very hard to shoot fish if you're not in the water. Yeah, wait till you have children and you transform your Instagram into that fat mum thing you were talking about earlier. Fat mum blog, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When everyone has uh, to leave, I just turn to a fat mum blog and I get these really trashy butterfly tattoos on my tits. Yeah. <laughs> <Singy> tits. <laughs> well, I've got, I've got, the, I've got the fat dad Insta going, so I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be right there to support you. Dad bods are hot though. I mean, don't get me wrong, mum bobs, mum bods are hot too. But um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's certainly like, yeah, it's all going downhill already, mate. I'm just about to turn thirty <laughs> ones. <laughs> no, you, you've got you've got plenty of time. Hey, I, I um, I'm going to wrap it up. I I have really enjoyed following you on Instagram. I think you're really cheeky and good fun, and that's one thing I love in spearfishing. I love to see people having fun and just having a laugh with it all because. You know, it's it's just spearfishing at the end of the day, and it's something you capture really well on your profile. I think so. It's really cool to have you on the show. Oh, thanks, mate. And look, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, yeah, I mean, all it is at the end of the day, it's it's glorified snorkeling. Um, and if you <laughs> if you shoot some fish and have some fun in the meantime, it's pretty good, you know. And um, I think half the fun of it is absolutely just sharing the stoke with others. Um, yeah, yeah. That's my that's that's my favourite part about spearfishing. Eh? Like I'm currently getting my partner my actually my fiance uh, Matt Chapman and in, uh into spearfishing and just seeing him thrive in the water is really cool and watching people that haven't spent much time in the water or anything get out there shooting I've taken a couple of people out they've shot their first fish um and just to see the look on their face and it really takes you back to your first fish or in my case my first black eye uh, when I got <laughs> recoil <laughs> but um yeah it's it's all it's all about that. Eh? It's all about sharing the stoke, I think. Eh? And um, and life shouldn't be taken too too seriously. And if uh, if you can't laugh at yourself, then mm. shit. <laughs> so hey, so people can come and follow you on Instagram. It's Katrin C A T T R I N with an underscore. Um, is there anything else people can come and check out, Katrin? Have you got a YouTube channel or anything like that? I don't. That's um. It's the next step. 
yeah, a little bit of a procrastination station for me. I'm very lazy. I very yeah. rarely take out a GoPro. Um, but if you want some shit quality dad jokes and bants, then head on over to my Instagram. I very frequently put up some subpar stories. Uh, <laughs> lit, lit Live is dead and buried. I don't know if you've, you're around for that. No. Uh, that's gone. That's in the past. That's when I used to just um, sit at home and, and drink a bottle of wine and go live and talk shit. Um, but, you know, I might, bring it, I might bring it back, actually. A lit live. I like it. That a sounds live. cool. Do you get it's, other it's people on for banter? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, you, hell you, yeah. You could be like, you should send them in to me and we could have drunken Catherine the Correspondent. And I just have like many drunken stories on. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That sounds uh, like it. That sounds like a bloody good plan, actually. Let's do that. Cool. All oh, good. Well, I'll, um, thanks for coming on the show. I'll catch you next time. It's been a pleasure. Catherine Sace, everybody. Jeepers. I hope you learned a few things about how to not dis- get disqualified from uh, spearfishing comps. She's a barrel of laughs. If you head to today's show notes, noobspero.com forward slash Catherine, C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E. Everything will be linked up. We discussed today, including her Instagram profile. Follow along. She's a she's a barrel of laughter, as, as you would have uh, found out today in today's episode. Hey, in two weeks' time, that's a fortnight, we are going to Brazil. Ricardo Raposo joins me to share about his spearfishing journey. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Knew nothing about Brazilian spearfishing. And uh, jeepers, there's a, a bunch of talented guys over there. And a few of them listen to the podcast, which I thought was weird because you think they're all Portuguese speakers and, you know, listening to English should be a pain in the ass, especially my, my terrible Kiwi accent. But anyway... These guys love it, and uh, so it was great to get at least one Brazilian on the show. And uh, so Ricardo Raposo on a fortnight. Thanks for listening to the show, and uh, subscribe. You know that way you get these new episodes. They just arrive straight up. And reviews always help. Love the reviews we read out at the start of the show today. Also, if you are a super fan, you really love the show. Join Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Noob Sparrow. There's 26 patrons there paying for trips where I come out, meet listeners, do interviews, all sorts of crazy stuff. This New Zealand trip funded by patrons. Thanks, legends. I'm out. Is it time for an upgrade? I'm nodding. You can't see it, but I'm nodding because I'm thinking to myself, it's always time for an upgrade. Head over to spearfishing.com.au. One way I like to upgrade is by shopping bargains end of line stuff sometimes there's always magic little finds to be had adreno used to have a an email newsletter called tight ass tuesday unfortunately it no longer exists although there is a clearance tab at spearfishing.com.au where a lot of the end of line stuff comes up the bargains it's the bargain bin that's me i'm I'm not proud of myself but that's how i shop sometimes and look you can save another 20 dollars on everything over 200 when you use the code noobspiro head over to spearfishing.com.au you'll thank me later this episode of the noobspiro podcast is brought to you by the world's greatest spearfishing magazine spearing magazine there are news and reviews for the latest spearfishing equipment and gadgets inside there's practical how-to and diy type articles there's spearing adventures from crazy noobers like you from all over the world and uh, it's, it's a magazine that you can pick up or you can look at and if you've got the digital subscription you can flick through and let it inspire your next spearfishing adventure even if you're having a dry run keep the stoke alive check it out at spearingmagazine.com if you're away from the good old usa though check out the international subscription that's at spearingmagazine.com